The Impact Lounge is the number one place to be for the real Impact Wrestling fans. Please follow me at BQ Speaks on Instagram and Twitter. If you're looking for a YouTube channel to cover Impact Wrestling in the best way possible, please consider subscribing here at the channel. And if you like what I have to say, consider leaving a thumbs up as well. Been meaning to talk about Brian Cage and the X Division here on the channel for a while, but it seems like other news bits and topics seem to come up and I hadn't gotten around to it. I've had to rework this whole vlog a couple times because my previous entries were a bit outdated. Stick around to the end of this video and I'm going to tell you who I think Brian Cage eventually drops the X Division title to. There's been a huge debate amongst longtime Impact Wrestling fans about what the X Division is and what it should be. There are also opinions of non-Impact fans who seem absolutely baffled and flabbergasted by Austin Aries carrying the world title while Brian Cage is the guy holding the X Division belt. You've got a group of people who will say it's, it's no limits. And then you have the ones saying the division should be full of cruiserweights. Light, it should be a lightweight circuit. And it should very much be about the little guys. Now, we all know this. TNA was built off the X Division. It's been said time and time again. They provided a very exciting style that around its conception you weren't seeing on mainstream television and you hadn't seen it since the WCW days. There was of course the Ultimate X match and then from what I believe the six sided ring was actually created for the X Division to give more, more corner post turnbuckles and angles to work with. We look at the current group and you've got guys who fit the bill. Matt Seidel, Trevor Lee, Caleb Conley, Desmond Xavier, but then you've got the machine. Don Callis said on a teleconference a few months back that he isn't a fan of too many titles and that's why we didn't see the Grand Championship receive a makeover. TNA for a period of time was known for a style, but now that that style has become mainstream, so mainstream to the point that fans expect flips and no-sells from just about whatever match they're watching, it's not as special as it once was, let's be fair. Now while many fans want cruiserweights in the X Division, the X Division is about a style. And considering that many larger competitors can now wrestle that style, well, they can compete in the X Division. It's just a new day and age. The X Division is your mid-card title now, folks. It's not at the bottom of the card like it previously was. When Brian Cage entered the company, he had two matches with Bobby Lashley in which he won. And he was jumping over the top rope during hurricanes, backflips, you name it. He brought his own brand of X Division style wrestling the minute he showed up at Impact. So for me, a man of his size adds a different narrative because for years, the company has struggled to do much storyline-wise with the smaller guys, often making the title about the in-ring action. There was no number one contenderships. It was just multi-man matches that meant nothing a lot of the time. I know there was the angle with Sanjay and Loki that was supposed to bring the X Division back and that was the whole focus on it. But for me, Matt Seidel was the one who truly added the jolt of lightning to this division. He was an amazing champion and Brian Cage taking the belt off him was much more important for that reason. Brian Cage didn't spend all of Slammiversary and the night after, which was the uh, following episode of Impact. He didn't spend those nights just tossing Matt Seidel around like a ragdoll. They often say, well, he's dominant. He's the dominant X Division champion. He's dominant by his win-loss record. But aside from a handful of matches at the very beginning, they haven't presented Cage as someone who just steamrolls the smaller dudes. He's having extremely competitive matches and putting on a hell of a show every time he's out there. I think Brian Cage is a great X Division champion, and whoever eventually beats him is going to get the rub of a lifetime. Now, who's that guy going to be? I want to make this clear. I came up with this determination well before there was an angle on television. I've thought for quite some time that Sammy Callahan was the guy who was going to take the belt off Brian Cage. Now, I'm glad the X Division title is not on the line at Bound for Glory because no story led up to that. Brian Cage was an addition to the match, but he wasn't the major cog to this feud. This is still between Sammy Callahan and Pentagon Jr., and this is also Sammy Callahan saying that himself and OVE are the greatest trios team. So if we just insert Brian Cage, X Division champion, um, all of a sudden the title's on the line, it's, it just feels like the old X Division. 
I think the Bound for Glory match will branch off into an angle between the two because I think the company knows that Sammy Callahan needs a title sooner than later. And I think they're going to find a way to do that. And they're going to find a match and find a style where Callahan can defeat Cage and add a totally different wrinkle to the X Division. You think people are tripping over Cage being the champion? Just wait until a guy like Sammy Callahan holds the belt. I think Brian Cage is an excellent, excellent, excellent X Division champion. He's really one of my favorite people to watch right now. He wrestles the style, and as long as he continues to impress, to wrestle that style, and to have competitive matches, then he 100% belongs in the X Division. He 100% deserves to be the X Division champion, and now we're taking it back to the days of old school wrestling where you had to win that mid-card title before you made it to the world title scene. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and for more from the Impact Lounge, check out the videos below.